Hi, Dave and I are here. How is everybody doing? How are you holding up in this weird... Oh, Stinky's here too, but you can't see him in these weird times. Um, so I wanted to talk about appetite fluctuations just before anybody asks any questions. Um, every, well, first of all, everybody differs in recovery. So some people always have a raging hunger and some people have raging mental hunger. Some people have raging physical hunger. Some people have raging both. Um, some people have raging hunger and then they have less raging hunger. Some people have not very much hunger and then they have lots of hunger. Some people have hunger, not so hunger, hunger, lots of hunger. Some people have lots of hunger to begin with and that tapers off. And then six months down the road for what it seems like a completely spontaneously, they get ravenously hungry again for a little while. And all of those things are fine. All of those things are recovery. And you certainly can't compare how that happens with you and you can't compare your hunger patterns to anybody else's in recovery. Of course, it can be helpful to talk to other people who have been through recovery and see what their journey was like. But ultimately, your journey is going to be specific to your body. So you do need to let's circle right back around again to trust your body. It knows what it's doing. And these things, will, hunger will come and go and it will rage and it will lessen and it will simmer and it will boil. And all of those things will happen to some people in recovery and they might not all happen to you and that's okay you just have to sort of also be a bit sensible about it so if you've got raging hunger and then suddenly out of nowhere it seems to disappear you still got to keep yourself eating haven't you it, that's just sort of like being sensible and don't ask the question well how much because there's no such thing as the right amount of food just eat as much as you can that's going to cover all your bases and that will be the sensible thing to do Remember, if you're in recovery from an eating disorder food is like a medication that you can't have a dose on Eleanor says how's your relationship with food now do you enjoy eating how do you decide what to eat do you cook I love eating I usually decide what to eat with either what's placed in front of me or the quickest thing that I can eat um, I don't think about food a ton apart from when I'm hungry and I want to eat I'll eat just about anything that anybody places in front of me. I prefer not to cook just because I'm lazy. Um, and my husband cooks a lot now. And a lot of the time we eat micro meals. Um, and a lot of the time we just eat uh, what you'd call fast food. And a lot of time we eat frozen pizza. And yesterday somebody made me a banana cake and it's absolutely wonderful. And I really love it when people bake me food because it doesn't happen often enough now because I live in a different country from my mom. My mum always used to bake cakes and things like that. She was a real sort of baker. Um, I was when I was sick. I have no interest in baking whatsoever now that I'm not sick. But I do actually love eating other people's baking. And so I, that's one of the things I miss about home the most is that my mother would always have a cake for me. And so um, one of my horsey friends made me this delicious carrot cake. And um, yeah, I put my life in danger by eating it. I didn't do any COVID restrictions or, you know, like the protocols and I just grabbed the cake off her, the whole thing, and I actually took a chunk out of it and um, put it in my mouth. And then afterwards, I was like, well, that wasn't COVID safe, was it? And I don't even care. All right. Okay. So questions. I should start at the top, really, shouldn't I? But my feed scrolled down, so I didn't see it. Um, um, all right. Fruity Living says, I'm getting so fast, body physically so uncomfortable. Do I keep force feeding the body to satisfy the mental hunger? It's not really force feeding, is it? You do want to eat. I know that your body probably feels full, but you do want to eat. So you do need to keep responding to mental hunger. Your mental hunger there is for a reason. Just trust it. That's You're very welcome, Pippa. Um, all right. Oh. Frederick. Insomnia and anorexia have been waking up every night since weeks. It's super common that your body prioritizing food over sleep. Your body is prioritizing you searching for food or eating over sleep, which if you think about it from your body's point of view, that is pretty drastic. We like sleep is a necessity for the human body. It's very important, but your body's got to the point where it's just like, right, well, getting more food in is more important than sleeping. So if you're awake and it's night and I don't care what time of day it, or night it is, and you're thinking about food, which I imagine is what you're doing when you're lying there awake, that's what happened to me anyway, you eat food. 
Um, I don't have very long today, guys, so I've got to keep a, um, just a, a couple more. Um, Katharina, how do you advise on how to get out of crazy, crazy recovery? Well, it's the same advice as how to start recovery <laughs> or anything else like that. You need to listen to your body. You're in quasi recovery because, yeah, you might be eating like, OK, but you're not really actually fully responding to physical and mental hunger. Are you? So that the same way, the way to get out of quasi recovery is the way to get into any sort of recovery. Um, and I don't know that I like quasi recovery. I don't think that that's recovery. I would just call that an eating disorder. You just it's just an eating. It's the same as your eating disorder was before. It's just with slightly more food. It's still an eating disorder. So I don't even know that I prescribe to quasi recovery as an idea anymore. You just if you're restricting food, you're kind of not in recovery. So my advice to you would be to get into recovery. Okay. Um. Lillian, Lily, why do I have this need to have attention? I feel like I need that everyone looks at me and sees that I'm struggling. So maybe you'll, I, I don't quite understand the question. Maybe you're saying that you need to feel that you need to prove that you have an eating disorder. Not uncommon. Um, like everything else, once you've recognized a trait, which you recognize that your brain is doing something that's a bit messed up, then it is your job to decide to not do that anymore. So when you feel that, oh, I need to appear as if I'm struggling to everybody, then you should probably just choose to, rather than do that, eat more food. It's going to be the sort of catch-all for everything is always eat more food. Okay, one more. I feel that my mother is eating less during the quarantine. I can't help but think she's competing with me to be skinnier. She's also exercising and I feel guilty because I'm not. Well, what, regardless of what your mother is doing, and what, regardless of what is going on in your mother's head, and regardless of what is going on in your mother's body, your recovery is between you and your body. And so what you need to do is you need to put up a wall. You are choosing to allow this to be a distraction to you. You are choosing to allow it to trigger you. You are choosing to do that. So the first step is recognizing I am choosing to let this be a problem. It's not really a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. I'm choosing to. And the reason you're choosing to is because your brain is looking for any reason to be like, don't eat as much. You know, so it's like yesterday I was riding quite a high energy horse. And um, it's like he was just looking for an excuse to leap into the air. Anything, a bird flies up. He's like, ah, I'm terrified of birds. He's not terrified of birds. He's just a load of energy and he wanted to express it, which I'm fine with. But your brain's a bit the same when you have an eating disorder. Your brain's just on the lookout. I am looking for something to tell me to restrict because I want to restrict so bad and I want to exercise so bad and all of those things. And I, So you, you need to be aware of that. And once you recognize that your brain is picking up on a certain thing, all of our brains do this in recovery and not alone. Um, that's when you re you sort of categorize that. Oh, my mum, my my brain does this thing where it uses my mum, whatever the hell she's doing in her life, as an excuse to for me to change my recovery path. And then you have to go like, okay, so that's the mum excuse. Call it the mum excuse thing. Give it a label, the mum excuse thing. And then whenever the mum excuse thing pops into your head, you go like, oh, I know what that is. That's the mum excuse thing. Stop it, brain. Thank you very much. I'm ignoring that. Go and eat some food. You're going to have to do that sort of categorizing, labeling, and then dismissing thing with lots of different excuses and thoughts and thought patterns and all those things. But it's a, just a good tool to start to do. And the main thing is recognizing that something, and then you can label it, and then, then it's a thing. And once it's a thing, you can actually take action to not allow it to be a thing. hope that helps. I've got to go. Bye.